So you may not know this, but I do custom wedding soaps fairly frequently, and you would be shocked at the number of uh, soaps I had to remake because during COVID, weddings got canceled and now they're getting pushed back and they may end up getting canceled again. But we have a cool workaround for the wedding soaps this time around. So instead of actually stamping them with the date, we're doing something else to commemorate the joyful union. And I'm gonna show you what that is. But before I do, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You're at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today we're making all the wedding y things. So, this is a custom bar from a Sudzer who wanted to do her wedding favors in soap form, which is cool. It actually happens more often than you would think. And I only wish that I had thought of this for, you know, my wedding. And I, I didn't think of that, but this is cool. So with this particular recipe, this is a lavender honey blend that the client selected and we will be stamping the, you know, appropriate lovey things on it in a gold filigree. So that is going to be awesome. And the design, she asked for a marbled soap design for this. And so we are going to be sticking with the light lavender, some honey tones to, you know, complement the honey smell as well as, you know, white to sort of make everything pop really well within the design itself. So we're going to go do that and you can see how to marble a soap for today. Okay, so today we are doing a custom soap for a wedding, which I love doing. Wedding soaps are always so much fun because you really get to personalize everything and help out with the the, the special day in in some way and so I always love that now for this particular wedding soap the uh, scent blend that we are doing is a lavender honey that the client had selected so it's got the really beautiful bright floral notes in there as well as a really sweet you know honey finish to it it's a delightful blend in and of itself I love it and have used it in Actually, I've never used it in a soap that I've released for my line. That's very interesting. But the uh, color scheme is going to be a purple and a gold. And we're going to do two different gold colors with that. And yeah, you're definitely emulsified. You could stop. There you go. Okay, good. And yeah, the uh, oil blend that we have going for this, it is a 50-50 split with uh, liquid oils and solid oils. And I am doing that because the client asked for a marbled soap with this. And so we're going to do some fun, pretty swirls, essentially, with the four colors, really, because we have the purple, we'll have a light gold and a dark gold, and then the white base for all of this. And I wanted to keep the batter really nice and fluid throughout the entire pour for that so we could do some really fun marbling. With it so that was you know that that's that's why I selected the 50 50 split with all of it and with the soap actually we did not do any kaolin clay um, because the client did not specify that they they wanted it and I I do what whatever they they, they ask for now this particular gold that I use this mica you saw me pour some out and then pour you know, into two different containers or whatever, and I used one to color the same, whatever. 
And so doing that, we're going to get a really light honey color for one of the golds and then a darker gold for, you know, the other. And then I put the titanium dioxide in the main base there to really whiten it up a lot. And the scent blend that I'm using this lavender honey, it doesn't accelerate trace or change the color of the, uh, the finished product, which is good because there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of blends out there that will change the color of the finished soap. And so with this one, it does not do that. It does not have any soaping, any problems with soap making. So that is, you know, good. We definitely love that. And yeah, so, oh yeah, the oil. So it's 50-50 split with liquid and solids, right? So the uh, liquid oils that I put into this are argan and canola, and that's it. And for the solid oils, I used coconut and palm. So a reasonably simple um, batch. The argan oil, obviously, that's a, it's a luxury oil, and it's really great for moisture and helping with collagen repair and all of that jazz when you're using it as, you know, an oil itself. Um, but again, this is not a, a leave-on product. Soap is a rinse-off product. And so those sorts of benefits don't really come out. Like the moisture properties, they, they do. But the uh, everything else that's you know awesome about an oil tends to not really manifest in the finished product. And again, even if it doesn't, this is a rinse-off product. So you know whatever. The real reason that I put argan oil in is because it contributes to a really nice creamy lather. So that when coupled with the canola, makes a really good you know creamy lather. And then you get the coconut oil in there that has um, a little bit of bubble to that as well. It just becomes a very luxurious lather. And I think for a soap that is scented with lavender and honey and is a wedding soap, we should definitely have a really luxurious lather for it because, you know, it's a wedding and that's fancy fancy. And yeah, that was, that was my reasoning and my thought process behind selecting the oil blend that I, that I ultimately did. Now, we're gonna do an in the pot swirl here to get ready to pour into the mold for the, the marbling of the soap, and then we'll decorate the top and do all the things. But yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the thing for the in the pot swirl, and we're just gonna take some, yep, do the skewer thing and kind of move everything into itself a little bit. I tend to move it a little bit more when I'm doing a marbled soap than I normally would for a random in the pot swirl. And you know, you'll get to see why in the cut, but this is ready to pour into the mold now. So let's do the thing. Okay, and for the pouring of something like this with the marbled soap, there's, it's a very simple pour. I just do a wall pour on an angle just to get everything in and just sort of keep it there until we get to the top and then things get a little bit messy and fun and that's awesome and I don't do any sort of skewering within the inside of the of the bar for a marble soap like this I don't take a hanger to it I don't take the skewer to it and do anything to the you know the actual soap itself I mean I decorate the top I use a skewer to decorate the top but you're only putting the skewer in you know like Oh, a quarter of an inch, if that, to decorate a top. So everything that you know we just poured in is not manipulated any further, and so that's cool. And then for the top, I'm just gonna put some lines of the remaining colors down. Everything that's left in the uh, in the containers, just scrape everything out. As a soap maker, we love scraping everything and getting it all into the mold because you know we don't want to waste any of the awesome soap. And so you learn to be very, very handy with a spatula when you are uh, making soap. I remember before I made soap all the time, I was the person that would, you know, be baking or whatever, and never scraped any of my any of my my things because spatulas are stupid. And now I use a spatula like a pro, and that that's cool. You know, making soap has upped my baking skills, which is fun. Now. For the decoration of the top, I'm just doing some little wispy, you know, pulls to make all the colors sort of pull into them each other. And then I thought it would be fun to, since the soap batter is setting up kind of well, not enough to really do a proper sculpted top with this, but I thought it would be fun 
to maybe put some little hearts on the top too and see where they sort of end up in the cut um, of the of the bars and so that's what I'm gonna do there just a nice cute little finishing touch for a wedding soap because love and hearts and all of the things and yeah once this is done I will be covering this and putting it in the oven so it goes through gel we are going to see pop it and has there ever been a time when I've said that we're not see popping something I think it's very rare actually but yeah it's a super beautiful and it is ready to go through its saponification thing so we can cut it you know tomorrow and see the beautiful marbling that's going on inside okay it is cut day and that is so pretty I really love how the hearts sort of showed up there yep like I said it wasn't really thick enough to oh that's beautiful there's like some rivers running through there not glycerin rivers but it looks you know kind of river river-esque stream uh, whatever but yeah no so the um, hearts they weren't really oh that's so pretty oh I love that the top wasn't really thick enough to actually do uh, something that would you know really stand out as far as a sculpted top but I do like that the heart showed up anyway and I love these bars those are so beautiful that is just all the just Oh, that's so lovely. I love that so much. I really like how there's a, an extra bright gold on the t on the top of that as well to really sort of pull in the, because you got the cool honey colors going on, but at the very, very top, you have the gold that's really bright and beautiful, and that will definitely pull in the stamp that we are uh, using for this. And with that little thing with the glove, I was actually just showing Scout how to take her glove off um, cause she was sitting there and you know, whatever. Anyway, so the stamp that we're doing on this, uh, it is a, I, I custom stamp all of my wedding soaps for, you know, the, the wedding because that makes sense there. It's a wedding soap. They should be custom stamped. And this one I am doing a, the customer asked me to do a gold leaf for this. So the gold on the top definitely works. Now, first step for this, for a wedding soap. I have found it can get, it, it can be very, very uh, cost prohibitive to do a custom stamp with like initials or names or whatever for every single themed wedding soap that I do. And so this is a workaround. So I have the, the heart stamp here with love, you know, and script on the bottom there. And those are super beautiful and love those. But then after, I have stamped all of the hearts onto the bars. I am then going to further customize them, putting initials into the, the middle portion inside the um, inside the heart itself. And so I do want to stamp these because of the thing that I use, the, the, the tools that I use for the initials. I do want to stamp these just as soon as I cut them. It's not necessary with the acrylic part, but for the tools that I use for the initials, it really is. You do need a soft bar in order for them to show up at all. And the tools that I, I use are little embossing uh, tools that are just, yeah, you see those? They're just little, little guys. And uh, going to pat it into the gold mica and just, I like to place the and, the ampersand, First, and that gives me a good guide as far as where I'm going to put the the two initials really for the, the soap and I have found that that is the best way to stamp these if you are not going to be you know using a, 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 a stamp that has everything you know already on it with all three of the you know the two initials and the ampersand anyway so yep place the uh, the, the ampersand and then do the first initial in the top corner there and then also the yeah it's so hard when you start stamping in something like this and you don't want to go and mess up the stamp that you just did and so ultimately I think I'm deciding against it and I'm just gonna go ahead and put the uh, 
the S at the bottom there and finish off that soap and get it off the field so we don't have to you know, worry about it getting hurt. So there it is, it's M and S with the love and oh, it's super cute. I love these and the smell of this is absolutely delightful. And yeah, the little wedding soaps. So lavender blended with anything is one of my most favorite things in the world, but especially this one, the lavender honey blend is absolutely extraordinary. I love using it and I don't use it very much. In fact, I don't think, yeah, no, I haven't had it in my actual line for a while. So I went ahead and made extras of these and put them on the website because I mean, obviously not with like the heart and the, just my, just my stamp. Uh, because it's really great and I think you should definitely be able to, you know, experience the scent as well as the beauty of the design and the design was very beautiful. I love this. It's a very fitting uh, design for a wedding soap really and I had a lot of fun doing it. If you are interested in purchasing the non-wedding stamped version of this, you can totally find it on the website at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in following me on social media, I'm there to the things, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you are interested in a custom soap or a wholesale soap or whatever, send me a message. So, you know, follow me on the, the social media so you can do that. And I would love to play with your thoughts or your designs. And if you are interested in more soapy antics, subscribe, do the things, yada, yada. And uh, that does it for me today. Uh, again, I hope you had a good time. Thank you so much for joining me for another round of 365 Days of Soap, and I will see you tomorrow.